Hi, I'm Ken Yu. Today I'll be talking about how to extract two-flex structures from 3D images. Uh, this talk will be based on a paper by Krishan, model-based detection of tubular structures in 3D images. I'll first talk about why we're doing so and the basic mathematical models behind this concept and then how we're going to do it how we're going to enhance those tubelet structures in 3D images. So the reason why we're interested in doing so is um, we like to detect tubelet structures in maybe simple images like this one, a donut shaped object, or something that is a bit more complicated, such as in the medical field, vessels. So the basic uh, model that we're assuming here is that we're assuming two-flex structures are when we dissect it and look at the cross-section of the object, uh, the cross-section would have a high intensity at the very middle of the cross-section and the intensity actually decreases as it goes towards the boundary. And the mathematical representation for that would be this where um, we're assuming the object is in 3D has a constant times a Gaussian uh, formula equation the equation is that so and um, obviously this is a Gaussian distribution um, equation and also for a toric model which would look like a donut shaped object the mathematical model would look like this one. It's a little bit complicated, but still, um, it describes how distribution is the highest at the middle of the cross section and it decreases as it goes towards the boundary in the x and z axial axis. So, um, for each location, we could actually derive have a first and second derivative and if we um, compose all of the different um, second derivative components we could get a Hagian matrix which looks like this and from this Hagian matrix we could derive the eigenvalues three eigenvalues to be exact and each eigenvalue would have its corresponding eigenvector now the interesting thing is that um, if we look at the eigenvalue the, the eigenvalues and vect eigenvectors derived from the Hagen matrix at the very center of the cross section for each model. So for a, for a cylindrical model, we would actually have two highly negative eigenvalues and one eigenvalue that equal to zero. And the corresponding eigenvector to this eigenvalue would actually be parallel to the axis, the main axis of this object. Same thing goes towards the toric model, where at this point of the cross section here, uh, we would have a eigenvector that is pointing towards this direction, which is um, y axis for this example. So, if we were to have a image with a uh, tubular structure inside, in order to detect the tubular structures using that concept, um, what we could do is um, uh, find its second derivatives. Uh, the alpha and beta would equal to either xx, xy, xz, and so on. And um, the equivalent, in order to calculate or um, approximate the second derivatives, what we could do is actually uh, create a second derivative of a Gaussian kernel and convolute it with the image itself. And again, for each voxel here, we would have a corresponding Hagen matrix. From the Hagen matrix, we can derive, again, the three eigenvalues and its corresponding eigenvectors. Now, for actual images, uh, we may not have a really exact tube-like structures. And, um, However, it will still be very similar to what we have derived in the previous slides, where for a bright tubular structure, 
uh, we would have the eigenvalue that is really low and two negative high valued um, eigenvalues. So if we were to um, use this concept and try to enhance um, vessel-like or tube-like structures within a 3D image, what we could actually do, uh, this is a vessel-nose filter um, proposed by Frankie um, in 1999. Uh, what he says is that uh, we could actually create an additional um, image that is the same size as the cost the image to be processed uh, we could let locations where the lambda 2 and lambda um, locations with lambda 2 lambda 3 that are greater than 0 equal to 0 and otherwise um, we could make the intensity like so which is basically um, trying to use the characteristics of the eigenvalues to enhance um, locations that are more tube-like. And um, this is what uh, he presented in 1998 in the paper he presented. Um, on the very top is a maximum intensity projection of the original MRI angiogram of the uh, renal arteries. Um, if we were to use um, different sizes of the Gaussian kernel during the calculation of the second derivatives. Uh, if we have small Gaussian kernel, we um, yeah, representing the Bessemer's filter um, output would look like this. And if we increase the size of the kernel, it would look like this. And if we combine the first four result, the resulting um, output of the Bessemer's filter would look like so, which is a um, fairly good um, way to extract or to enhance um, tube-like structures in 3D images. Here's another example. And um, that's about it. Thank you all.